And I know that Carl Schlager and Bobby Peterson, they've already been practicing over here in the, in the sheep shed. Uh, a few things like Nicolina and green grass at home, all that kind of stuff. We're going to get them out here in a little bit. We're going to drag them out here, and they're going to sing that. And uh, we'd like to invite anybody that's got any type of story to tell, especially picking on Larry, would really be sweet. You know, surely she's been an angel all her life, so we can't pick on her. But Larry, we can put him on the back burner and try him. Ah! Loud. Am I, I talking think, loud? I think that Lawrence is a pretty special guy too. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I thought we could really, you know, sock it to him. That's okay. He can take oh, it's okay? Okay, good. But anyway, we're going to rip off a couple of polkas here and see if I can remember. I told Larry, I said, I'm not, I'm not going to play it. I'll play a couple. I'll see if I can remember how if I can play a couple. That's, that's the big thing. But sit back and, 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 and visit with your neighbors and relatives. And uh, I'm going to play a couple of Oopai Shoopai Polish style, not hostile songs. And, uh, and if anybody has a story to tell about this fine young couple, young couple. Look how nice that. See? I'm nice, ain't I? 50 years, yes. Has he got a story to tell? No. Why not? Any anytime you feel like it, though, you let me know. But anyway, here's a couple of focus.
We can suffer through it. Come on, we know you can do it. Let's give Bob Peterson a hand. Get him up here on the stage underneath this big oak tree, and we're gonna sing this song for Larry and Shirley. Yes, we are. <laughs> oh God, I knew you were gonna help me out. Hey, hi, Bob.
Can I give him a hand? Thank you. Sure you can. A few words from the grandkids. You got any more comments you're going to give? Your grandpa's a little red in the face, I think. Sorry about that one, Grandpa. I think he's forgiving. Give these grandkids a hand. Yep. Truth always hurts. My garbage is blown. Yeah, any wild stories here are more than welcome. Uh, hey, we got one. We got one. We got one. This is good. Uh, my name is Wayne. I fall on Shirley's side of the family. And everybody remember where Larry, first, Larry and Shirley first used to live right across from his in-laws? Right across from Eddie and Lester? Well, Larry used to rent a little plot up on Lake Pekegama for farming. And my brother and myself, and we used to stay with Sherry and Larry once in a while, and we used to do the cultivating of the corn. Remember that, Larry? Okay. Well, this is back at the time when we were about 12 or 13, and the deer were just starting to come back into that area. Once in a while, you see deer go across fields and so forth. Now, I remember one night, Larry says, come on, let's go. We're going to go out and shoot a deer. So this was at nighttime, of course. Larry had that old famous 58 Ford. And we went out to this field, and we were shining the deer, and he took a crack at with a 30 out 6 And once you know, coming down from the north, it was the county road 11, is that 11? Okay, coming from 11 was headlights. Larry says, game warden. We jumped in that car. We went past Betty and Lester's, and there's a hill that you come across. That Ford never hit the ground for about 30 feet on the other side of that hill. And we went past Lester's, we were doing probably 75, 80 miles an hour. I was never so scared in my life. Now, my brother remind, remembers the same kind of a story. So here was Larry, uh, what would you call it, uh, corrupting as young kids, only 12, 13 years old. But as he grew older, he, he, he was buying those deer licenses. And all the years I've known Larry, he is the most fortunate deer hunter I've ever seen in my life. One time he had a deer walk right underneath his stand. He shot it from the top right down through. He took a shot one time, what, about 300 yards? and. Got the both back legs off that deer, remember that, Larry? So, uh, it's good to see you settle down, Larry. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah? Is there any more of these stories? This is really could get interesting. <laughs> Well, while anybody out there is thinking about a story about Larry or Shirley or any of the family uh, from the Petersons here, uh, I suppose I could sing a tune or two. Thank you. 
back again. That's the time I'll come back home to you. So anytime you're feeling lonely, anytime you're feeling blue, anytime for a marriage, ain't got the answer in the strangest way. I never left a place in such a hurry, such a jump place upon that day. I went home and wrote to Nicolina. Oh, Nicolina, won't you meet me soon? Meet me in the woods on Wednesday evening. Be there with the rising of the moon. Oh, Nicolina, oh, Nicolina. And meet me there with the rising of the moon. But there I met this figure disconcerting. The moon no greater glory could attain. The one I met was Nicolina's papa, and with the most disturbing pain. On my knees, how they began to tremble. I tried to run, but there was not a chance. For in the woods that I knew these I stumbled. The cane began to do the polka dance. Oh, Nicolina! Oh, Nicolina! The cane began to do the polka dance. I went home and wrote to Nicolina. Just not a slightest bit of hope in me. And if you can end me of this awful torture, I end in no jumping in the sea. Oh, Nicolina answered in a hurry. Say, darling, if you don't be so unwise, a suicide is nothing but a dumbbell. But don't you wait until the old man dies. So now I wait, and so does Nicolina. And raven the old man kicks the bucket soon. And on his grave will blank in his remembrance the cane he used on me beneath the moon. If I had the governor, where the governor's got me, before Tuesday morning, that governor'd be free. Six months have gone by, babe, I wish I were dead. This sturdy old jailhouse, the floor for my bed. It's raining, it's hailing, and the moon gives no light. Oh, babe, please tell me why you never write. I've counted the days, babe, and I've counted the nights. I've counted the minutes, I've counted the lights. And I've counted the footsteps, and I've counted the stars. And I've counted a million of these prison bars. And I've counted on you, babe, to get me a break. But I guess you forgot, babe, for your sake. And you know who is guilty, you know it too well. But I rot in this jailhouse before I will tell. Come all you young fellows with a heart brave and true. Don't believe any woman, you're bit if you do. If you trust any woman, be careful what kind. For 21 years, boys, is a mighty long time. Hey! Oh, you learned that from Brother Herman. Oh, yep. God. Yeah. That's really cool. I think there's some more, but I, I, think, huh? I think there's some more. What? Songs like that. Nicolina's song? Oh. I thought that died. I didn't know well, that we was alive. <laughs> I thought sure it died. I sing that every once in a while on the track. Oh, that's, that old, uh, old oak tree here. The old oak town? Yeah. yeah, we'll help you. Yeah, you can bring it all the same. Who looks the same as I step down from the train? And there to meet me was my mama and my papa down the road. I looked, and there came Mary. Hair of gold and lips like cherries. It's good to touch the green, green grass 
Kabong. The old house is still standing, though the paint is cracked and worn. And there's that old oak tree that I used to play on. Down the lane I walk with my sweet Mary, hair of gold and lips like cherries. It's good to touch the green, green grass of home. Yes, they'll all come to meet me neath the shade of that old oak tree when they lay me neath the green, green grass of home. I'm going to do that talking verse. Then I awake and I look around me at the four gray walls that surround me and I realize that I was only dreaming. For there's a guard and there's a sad old padre arm in arm they'll walk at daybreak again to touch the green, green grass of home. Now, yes, they'll all come to see me neath the shade of that old oak tree when they lay me neath the green, green grass of home. All right. I will. Okay. That was for Roseanne Prangoffer. I'll have to write to Brother Herman and tell him a Nicolina song is it's still dead. alive and going. Just dead in Pine City. Yeah. Huh? It I still really, goes in Pine huh? City. Boy, I'm really surprised. We got some fellas that are going to tell another story. Are you ready for this, Larry? We forgot about some stuff. You tell your stuff first. Okay. Okay. When we were up at Deer Country, I can't remember who it was, me or Cole, said, um, Grandpa, don't fart. He'll blow up. And then, uh, what's his name? Dave Daffenbacher said, if I fart, we're all going to die. Well, you don't want to get deer out of here at all. But remember what I said? <laughs> Anything that goes on at deer hunting huh, stays there. Oh, you don't get to come no more. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's serious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and uh, my grandpa always makes up songs and stuff, and one of them was, Bozy, can you see any bed bugs on me? <laughs> okay, what else can we make them red with? <laughs> Here we go. Here, Oli and Lena. Well, I don't know if I should say Oli and Lena. I think it was Lawrence and Shirley. When they... Started farming, they didn't know too much about it, and somebody said, well, you got to plant the crop. <laughs> so they threw out some corn and oats, and it didn't grow very good, and I don't know, but it was Andy Bernicker come over and told him he got to get a plow. So Lawrence, he went into Souser's, and he bought a plow, and come home, and he tried to pull it. Surely was pushing, and that didn't work very good. So Andy come over and told him again, he said, well, you either got to buy a team of horses, or... A couple of mules. He said, where do you find them? Oh, down the road here. Pangles sell them. So he went to Pangles, and Pangle heard about that, so he thought, well, he'll put a big price on it. No, surely, he told Lawrence, we can't afford that. She said, how about some baby ones? Yeah, Lawrence thought that would maybe be a little cheaper. And no, the guy said, I don't have any of them neither, but I'll give you a couple of seeds. He went in the garden, and he got a couple of little green watermelons, and Give Shirley and Jay, she was so happy, they drove down the road and, and they bounced out of the car in the ditch and busted and she went to pick them up and two jackrabbits flew out. He hollered, Lawrence, Lawrence, help me, help me. She said, the mule's hatched. 
Jesus, they run from Bram to Pine City and they couldn't catch them jackrabbits. And Lawrence finally gave up and he said, I tell you what, Shirley, they're too fast for the plow anyhow. <laughs> You know, there is a little story here before Larry met Shirley, you know, and he, he, he thought he, he should get a girl and get married and settle down, but he was kind of getting frustrated, so he got a hold of this song, and this is the song he was singing before he met Shirley. I'll take the arm from some old table, take the leg from some old chair, from my neck we'll get the bottle. And the horse will get some hair. And when I put this contraption together, I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'll get more loving from this rum dum dummy than I've been getting from you. Now that was the tune that Larry was singing for a while there, but things worked out okay. <laughs> 